Hey everyone, today I wanted to go over a part of G2's match against EG in week 2 of groups. This was their first loss of the day in what ended up being a 0-3 day for G2. While the odds were already stacked against them after a 1-2 week in week 1, there was some hope given how close they made it against JDG. However, losing against the theoretical weakest opponent at the start of the day ended up setting the tone for the rest of the matches as their chances to make the bracket stage dwindled. So let's have a look at their early game and what went wrong against EG. Now, G2 starts this game with a fake leash from Flacket to sell the idea that Lee started on red. Both junglers in this game are pathing top to bot, and G2 knows where Inspired is as he's spotted on Raptors after clearing red and Krugs. In the bot lane, we have Draven Thresh versus Lucian Nami. G2's bot lane has control in the first waves and grabs level 2 first, which then allows them to zone out EG's bot lane and push in the wave. With information on Inspired, Yankos wants to invade, so he does three camps top into red and looks for an invade. G2's bot lane moves with him after pushing in the waves and sweeps for vision. G2 sees that Gromp is dead and spots Hecarim at Wolves, but they are unable to get anything out of this invade outside of information. Inspired is now zoned out from bot lane, so he chooses to go to top scuttle, as Lee Sin is bot side and EG's bot lane do not have priority to contest bot scuttle. Yankos takes the bot scuttle, while G2's bot lane goes back to lane. From here, a number of poor decisions and play from G2's bot lane gets them dove and killed. And to explain everything that went wrong, I have SK support treats. So, when G2 got level 2, they pushed the wave into the tower. This wave is going to bounce. A bounce happens when the minions crash into the turret, which means the next mini wave is going to be closer to the EG side of the map, and it's going to slowly push out into G2's side of the map, as the next mini wave will reinforce EG's first wave. At 410, we see this in action. EG's mini wave is bigger, which means if left untouched, it will push into G2. Now, there's several mistakes that happen from this point onwards. Firstly, this ward by Flacket. The goal of this ward is to spot Hecarim's lane gank, but because of the place it was placed in, it actually doesn't spot Hecarim hugging the wall on the other side of the lane. In any case, G2's bot lane should know something is up, as BB warded the enemy Krux, but Hecarim hasn't shown there and they know that he fully cleared top to bot. Secondly, the wave. As mentioned before, this wave is going to slowly stack into a slow push, perfect for EG to dive on. However, G2 can fight this off by thinning the wave and preventing it from crashing under their turret, and they can do this because they have the threat in the 2v2. Even if Hecarim is there, EG don't have the setup for lane gang pre-6, but they barely try to thin the wave. Targamas is barely attacking the minions, Flacket is basically only last hitting, so EG's wave stacks up. Then there's the lantern bait from Targamas. This lantern is used sometimes as a fake. You bluff that your jungler is there by putting down the lantern which signals, hey my jungler is here and he can gank. The issue is that, one, even if Lee Sin is there, EG should have the advantage because that they know their jungler is behind them so it's a 3v3. And two, Lee Sin would never gank on this because there's a stacked minion wave which means that with the minion advantage it's way harder to execute. And three, G2 should know that Hecarim is there because he didn't show up on the top side of the map. So this lantern bait essentially does nothing, wastes a key ability that they don't have for the dive, and Targamas also steps up to sell the bluff, which ends up with him just being chunked and losing Guardian. Then there's the dive and how G2 misplayed it. This is a very hard dive to execute for EG due to the lack of CC. If Flacket avoids the bubble, he can use E to stop Hecarim, and without the CC this is easily a kill trade that can even end up being favorable for G2. Flacket has both W and heal available for movement speed, but still gets caught by Nami's bubble, which then allows EG to chain the dive with Hecarim's knockback. EG end up taking two kills with only an execute death on Nami, and at this point they're already behind almost 1k gold at 5 minutes. Immediately after what happened in bot lane, another mistake is made and G2 gives up another kill. Coming out of base after his death, Targamus looks for a play in the mid lane. The issue with this move is that he is spotted walking over a ward, so EG knows that he's in the river without flash. Earlier during the bot dive, we can see Akali hovering the bot side of the map. G2 don't see the ward go down, but they do see Akali moving bot and popping the scryer's bloom. The raptor ward is a pretty common one, but Targamus only turns on his sweeper in the river. But beyond that, it's also not his turn especially not without flash. And what I mean by turn is what some people also call tempo. Essentially, this is no longer G2's turn to be sweeping and putting vision around mid anymore. Why? Well, G2 have no information on EG's support or jungler. The top lane Shen with a global has just hit level 6, and even though Lucian is not here because he walked through bot, he definitely could have walked with Nami through mid to look for something given the wave state in bottom lane. 
This results in yet another death on G2's side, and they were lucky it wasn't worse, as Jojo should have solo killed Caps, but he missed Akali R2 on a flashless Azir. Two minutes later, the final nail in the coffin occurs, at the Herald where G2 tries to contest and just ends up giving up a flash and a kill. EG set up first, pushing in bot lane, which allows Lucian to recall and Nami to move up to mid. Even with Targamas and Yankos moving up, G2 are still at a numbers disadvantage. Their goal is to attempt a miracle steal and then try to get out with a Thresh Lantern. As EG set up for Herald, Inspire drops a ward in the brush behind the pink ward, which gives info on any G2 member that tries to cross over to the blue buff or move into the river. While Targamas and Yankos take the blast cone into the blue buff, Caps is probably afraid to follow, he doesn't have flash and crossing the choke point against the Kali Lucian Nami is incredibly dangerous. EG knows that they have a 4v2 in their hands, and Jojo finds the flank. G2's desperate attempt is almost instantly thwarted. At 9 minutes and 30 seconds and facing a 2.3k gold deficit, G2's only hope would be to force plays on Shen, as he is the one with a global, or to teamfight their way back into the game. But neither option really panned out and EG slowly choked out the LEC's second seed in the 32 minute win. All in all, a disappointing 1 in 5 finish for G2. There's a lot to go over what exactly went wrong from them this world, but I just wanted to look at this game specifically as one of the many things that really didn't pan out for them. I hope you guys enjoyed this short video, and um, yeah, see you next time.